Did you ever get a kind of scared feeling that maybe the kids are taking things over a little too much? I mean, really taking over. You'll see what I mean when you hear all the bright young ones on Theater 5. Morning, Mr. Owen. Get you a taxi, sir? Yeah, yeah, Pop. I'm late for a conference. Oh, you're going to be on the door for a while? All day. Good. They're interviewing me here on the Youth Party Speaks program tonight. A lot of cables and equipment and stuff has got to go up to my apartment. Take care of it, please, when the guys come. Yes, Mr. Owen. Say, that's quite an honor getting on that program. Yeah, yeah. Right now, how about getting me in a taxi? I told you I was late. I'm trying, Mr. Owen. You guys wonder why we had to take over. It's little things like this. You get on in years, you don't shape up. And, uh, 41 to you is getting on in years? The law says, and I figure it's logical. Uh, that anybody reaching 41 automatically becomes a senior citizen. Sure, simplest way to clear out the dead wood. Now, am I going to have to get my own taxi? Well, you can see for yourself there hasn't been a single one in sight. Sir. Sir. Okay, so I hike it. But it's a lousy situation, and I'm going to speak to the mayor today. Well, aren't you fortunate, little boy? Walk in and tell the mayor, just like that. Uh, you say something? I suppose you want a tip for nothing. No, sir. Well, don't forget to take care of that TV setup. Uh, you needn't worry, sir. I won't forget. <laughs> You ready on the street? Anytime you are, CB. Up on one. Joe Finkley. Hello there, I'm Fred M. Finkley. Each week at this time, the Youth Party of America brings you informal, unrehearsed chats at the homes of leading figures in our government. Tonight, I'm standing outside 121 Park Mews. That's the exterior of the building you are seeing on your home screen. In a moment, we'll take you inside to meet the controversial young man who has defied Mayor Stanley Robinson's age restrictions to become the Youth Party's candidate for senator from this state, William S. Owen. Now, Billy Owen is just 18. Mayor Robinson, who celebrated his 21st birthday last week, favors a constitutional amendment restricting office holders to the ages of 20 to 41, the mandatory retirement age. And now, without further ado, we take you inside 121 Park Mew. Do you have a permit to broadcast inside this building? Yeah, well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not quite sure what's happening here. What's but, happening uh, is that you're not going to interview Billy, juvenile punk Owen, because as doorman of this building, I'm not letting you in. <laughs> well, uh, this is very interesting. Uh, may I have your name, sir? Everybody around here calls me Pop. Well, now, Pop. It's ridiculous, of course, because I call my Pop Pop. Uh -oh. Now, for your information, he's 65 years old and doesn't mind the appellation. <laughs> he lives in a Golden Years enclave near St. Petersburg, Florida, where everybody's called that. But I'm only 41 years old. The law retired me and put me out to pasture when I achieved that magic number. My past achievements, my present abilities were ignored. The law... Uh, uh, now, look, sir, this is all very interesting, but I'm... Yeah, uh, but I'm a loquacious old man, and I'm lossing up your show. Well, <laughs> you just said it was controversial, and my son, the mayor... Uh, uh, what did you say? I said my son, Mayor Stanley Robinson, Jr. Now, now just a minute. You claim that your son... The son the... of his father. I am Stanley Robinson, Sr., granted this retirement job of doorman because I am no longer wanted as professor of political history at Columbia University. Uh -huh. Oh, I know, it's the law and all that. Now, I don't take it personally, and I realize that the uh, youth party might find out it's making the same mistakes the party in power has been making since time began, if anybody started reading history. Oh, now, wait, now, wait, no, sir. No, no, you don't. Treat, uh, I've got this microphone, and your cameras are trained on me. Oh. Now, you think I'd give up this opportunity? They threw me away, me and everyone my age. I should have seen it coming ten years ago. All the talk about keeping young, looking young, products to please youngsters, rumbles, youth revolts, young men in government, young people everywhere saying that they never made the world the way it is, so why should they follow us? Hey, over there, Joe, you know what oh, you're he's going, going to do call it. the cops, isn't he? Oh. Huh? Well, I'm within my rights, Mr. Finkley, and I'm sure my son, the mayor, who helped put me into this uh, monkey suit, would be pleased at how well I'm carrying out my assignment as doorman. Maybe he's even watching this program. Hey, 
Hey, what's happening? Why does this lousy set have to start kicking up now? Oh, there, it's okay. I hope now. my son is watching, so he can see that our generation knows how to fulfill a duty, even though we've been forced into slavery by the cult of youth. No, 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 oh, he's back oh, on that oh, tack again. Why doesn't somebody right? get him out of camera range? Oh, oh, do you realize here. what he's doing to me? Look, the cops have arrived. Okay, Pop, you had your say. Come along. I'm only doing my duty, officer. Disturbing the peace, seditious statements, inciting to riot. Good, good, throw the book at him. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. If my son, the mayor, sees you on television, Arresting Maybe me. you don't know that Mayor Robinson has a reputation with us on the force. He's so honest, he'd arrest his own grandmother. But hey, how do you like no, that, no, Barb? I haven't done anything wrong. Now to the judge, old man. Come along. I won't. Now, no, listen. Let go. You got to... Stan, you've got to do something. They're taking him off to jail. Okay, I'll turn it off. Oh, darling, that's your father. Where does he come off opening his big mouth like that? Why, it could kill me politically. And right now, with that little jerk, Billy Owen, trying his worst to undermine me, I can't... darling, you're not thinking very straight. I suppose you want me to rush down to the tombs and throw my arms around him. Well, I think he's kind of sweet. Sweet? He's a shark doing this to me. I don't think he intended to hurt you. He was only trying to get your attention. Well, he sure managed to do that. Well, what are you going to do, Stan? How are we going to help him? I happen to be your husband. You think it's important to consider how to help me? Of course, darling. Then realize I can't go down and bail Dad out and risk publicity. I'll say I'm selling to the old people. We've got to do something to keep his mouth shut, stop him from telling who he is. Maybe, maybe if I went down and talked to him. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, l- l- let me think now. If you went, it wouldn't look as though we were abandoning him and... And I could bail him out and you could quietly fix the charges against him. That's it. We, we put him in a hotel somewhere and he gets lost until everybody's forgotten the incident. Um, do you, do you think you could talk him into keeping his mouth shut? Why, well, I, I don't know, darling. But I'll try. Mr. Robinson. Hmm? Well, what have we here? An angel of mercy or uh, merely a fantasy of my sick mind? I I came to help you. Oh, I'm honored. And uh, surprised that they'd let anyone like you in this dismal dungeon. I'm here to bail you out. Uh, Oh, well, then you are an angel of mercy. Why? I'm your daughter-in-law, Mr. Robinson. Uh, You? We saw what happened to you on that television show. Oh, thank the Lord. Oh, believe me, I'm delighted to meet you. Thank you. I wish I could have met you under different circumstances. (laughs) Well, I'm afraid Stan and I haven't exactly been communicating. Even so, why didn't you call him? Well, they wouldn't even let me try. They said I was crazy claiming to be his father. And you haven't talked to any reporters? Well, there's a crowd of them out there, I hear, but they haven't been allowed in. Oh, good. You know you put Stan in a very tough spot with what you did. My son hasn't exactly shown me many courtesies. I know how you must feel, but don't you see, if if he should be soft in your case, it would be going against the whole platform of the Well, whole... I'm sure simple humanity is definitely not one of the planks. Oh, Mr. Robinson. Uh, I know, it's strange to be called that. I, I've gotten so accustomed to pot. It doesn't seem dignified to me somehow. Uh, whatever became of the dignity of seniority... You know, I believe I like your daughter-in-law. I wish there were some way we could reach across the generations and be friends. I don't know why we can't. But the first thing I have to do is get you out of here. Willie. And then find you a place to live. I already have a place to live. Oh, oh, you can't stay there now. You'd be recognized after tonight. There can't be any more publicity. Stan might lose the next election. Well, even now we think Billy Owen might use what you did against Stan. I see. I heard him, didn't I? I'm afraid so. Well, I'm sorry for that, Barbara. But surely you don't expect me to hide out for the rest of my life on his account. Wait, I've got an idea. There's some lovely new senior citizens' villages where you could go and they wouldn't know you. You could relax. Just do as you please. Do as I please. Doing as I please is living my life, doing the work I spent my youth learning how to do. It isn't being a vegetable nodding away in an old people's ghetto. But wouldn't you rather do that than hide away in some hotel room? It isn't much of a choice, is it? Oh, you are a lovely, fresh, intelligent young lady with all the promise of life. But one day, you'll reach the age of 41. You'll still have your beauty. But you will have committed the sin of being older than all the bright young ones. I wonder how you'll feel then. Well, I mean, well, if I ever get to be that old, I'll I'll commit suicide. Oh, the classic cry of the young. All right, it's obvious that sympathetic as you wish to be, we do not communicate either. Uh, What do you have me do? Well... If you stop claiming to be Stan's father, he'll have the charges against you dismissed. I see. Oh, I see it all now. Okay, you win. Uh, I have only one condition. What is that? That I choose the location for my hideout. 
an apartment at 121 Park Mews, that I live there as a tenant, even though I may not be using the services of a doorman. Oh, gee, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know whether Stan would go for that, but... Gee, I, I don't see why not. Pop? I'm, uh, I'm busy, honey. I know. I only wanted to ask, is it fixed up for your father? About the apartment, I mean. Well, he's being taken there today under an assumed name. Now, are you satisfied? Yes, I guess so. I... Well, I'm not. Why did he have to go back there? Even keeping out of sight, it's dangerous. I don't blame him. Wanting to live there when he'd had to be the doorman with everybody patronizing him. Oh, oh, what name is he going under? Barb, you've done your bit. Now, there's no need to get involved any further. But I feel guilty as though I trapped him into this somehow. He did it to himself. I don't understand. When I talked to him at the jail, I don't know, he was so... He was so bright and, and kind of funny. It began to seem shameful to me that I hadn't even met him before. You don't know when you're lucky. In the old days, people used to live with their parents. Honest? Well, didn't they have senior citizens' villages then? Oh, some, like the one my grandfather went to, but... They were privately owned and voluntary. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a grandfather until I heard your father mention him the other night on that television thing. Well, now you know. And will you leave me alone? Let me get my work done before I'm clobbered with meetings. Yes, Mayor, I'm going. Stan, did you and your father always fight each other? Oh, women. To answer your question, yes. Well, didn't you ever love him or admire him? It seems to go against nature. That's where you're entirely wrong, my dear. It's natural for sons to rebel against their fathers. I saw no reason why I had to accept the world the way it was just because my parents said it was so. And the others, like me, have proved, we young ones, that we can run things better without them. It's a crowded planet. Why should we let the ones who've lived their lives deprive us of our chance? Easy, dear. This is Barb, remember? You're not making a political speech. But you keep spilling into sentimentality. I don't like it. As my wife, you've got a position to hold. I know, but I keep thinking about your father. If he weren't my father, would you give him a second thought? Oh, I'm not sure. It's a very interesting question. I, I really don't know. Well, then let me tell you. You wouldn't. But he is your father. Oh, but... for... Would you quit putting me on and get out of here? Yes, your honor. <laughs> Will you let me in? Just a minute. I don't think it's wise of you to come here, my dear. Well, that's a fine way to welcome a lady. Well, it's what we've come to, but of course I'm delighted to see you. Uh, did you meet anyone coming in? No. Oh, it must be awful to have to stay inside here all the time alone. It looks comfortable. But... Oh, it's comfortable enough. Uh, luxurious, really, but... Uh... Well, now I'm here, I wish I were back being Norman. It was doing something, at least. Well, you've got something to do now. I brought you some books. Hmm. I didn't know whether you had anything to read, and since they won't let you have a phone, I, I couldn't call to find oh, out. Oh, you're very kind. Oh, I wasn't sure what you'd like, but well, here, here's the sea around us. Oh, that's appropriate. What else? Oh, the golden bow. Now, how would anyone of your generation know about that? We're not necessarily stupid, you know, even if you think we are heartless. I apologize. Oh, you did bring the Bible. Mm -hmm. And Shakespeare. I guess I'm brainwashed after all. You're marvelous. Pop. Yes? How long are you going to be able to take hiding out like this? I don't know. How long do you think I'm going to have to? I don't know. There's no telling. Oh, Pop, there's one thing I simply can't justify about the administration. I, I even worry about it in Stan. They forget that, that people are human with human feelings. And Stan said I was sentimental, but I don't think it's that. It's just that, that I keep feeling. You feel. That's the important thing. But what shall I do? It's getting so Stan and I argue all the time. Oh, well, my dear, I can't solve that for you. The conflict of the heart and the head will probably always be man's great dilemma. My mind says it's illogical to still love my son, but I do. Yet I would fight his ideas to the end. And I can't help admiring you for that. You know, Stan would be furious if he knew I'd come to bring you books and talk like this. And I want you to come and see me again. 
But uh, it's got to be your decision, I'm afraid. Yes. I guess it has. Goodbye, Pop. Goodbye, my dear. Mrs. Robinson speaking. Barbara, it's Pop. I've got to see you. Pop, what is it? Where are you? I slipped out of the building. I'm in a phone booth, and I must talk to you right away. It's very important. Well, all right. I'll meet you. Where? Come to the tavern, corner of Park Mews. I'll be in the back booth. Okay, I'll be right there. You know you're breaking your word doing this. I know, I know, but I think you'll agree I had to when I explain. I... Now, it so happens that 121 Park Muse was built about a year ago. Well? It was put up for profit with no thought to the sensibilities of people who like to belch in private. Oh, Pop, what's that got to do Just with... listen. Now, I spent most of my time in the apartment on the sofa reading. Yes. The sofa's against the wall. Yes. And I overhear things. Conversations in the apartment next door. Oh, who lives there? Some young fellow, Billy Owen, comes to see all the time. And I can recognize Billy's voice. Barbara, there's a plot going on, and it has to do with Stan. Well, I, I guess we always suspected that. Nasty little schemer. I'm not sure how much he's involved. It seems to be some big power they're afraid of. Can you tell who? Well, I strain my ears to get the sense of what they're saying, but it's difficult. Now, the one thing I'm sure of is that Stan is in danger. You mean they, they try to put him out of office? More than that, Barbara. It sounds to me like a coup against the whole administration, and not by legal means, either. What, what do you think we ought to do? Well, it's up to you. You mean to warn my husband? Yes. Oh, Pop, how am I going to tell Stan I found out about this? You believe what I'm telling you, don't you? Yes, 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 of course I do. Well, then you must let him know that you've been seeing me. Let him know the whole story. Even if I do, he'll only laugh at me. He'll say it's some kind of trick you're trying to pull. He doesn't trust oldies. Oh, excuse me, I mean older people. And, well, you have to admit he has every reason to think that you're against him. Barbara, you've got to try. Now, even if you can only get him to investigate, find out for himself. All right. Are you going back to the apartment? Yes. Okay, I'll try to get him to come over there and, and let you tell him yourself. I still think he's putting me on. Honey, if there's even a grain of truth in his story, it's worth checking. Okay, okay, so I'm going over and check. But, Sugar Plum, if it turns out there's nothing in it... What do you do? You're going to hear from me. And good. Oh, Stan, listen to me. Your father loves you. He sold you such a bill of goods that... Oh, wait, here we are. Uh, driver, stop at 121. Stan! Look! Look at the doorman! It's Pop! What's he doing in that uniform? Oh, that tears it. Your Honor! Mr. Mayor, will you wait in the car a moment, please? I will not. Please, wait there. Don't step out in the open. Their snipers will get you. What snipers? Billy Owen's teenagers? No, not them. The others. They're coming from Florida, from out west, from all over. Dad! Dad! Oh, what happened? Pull him in the car, quick! Yeah. Get him in! Yeah. Son, son, it's all right. I'm glad it was me. I was afraid you'd walk into their line of fire. Hurry, hurry, close the door. Papa, are you all right? No, it's all right. Driver, get us away from here, fast. Dad. Dad, try to tell me. What did you say about Florida I and the others? I couldn't warn you, but there's going to be a revolution. The old people have organized a secret army. The old people? Your grandfather, Stan. And all the others who were forced into retirement in Florida and all over. They've risen up against the youth party and Billy Owen's teenagers, all of you. The old people? I don't understand. No, neither do I, Barbara. All this time, I thought my pop and the others were perfectly happy living down there in their senior citizen towns. Why, he had nothing to worry about. Why would he want to start trouble? An old man like that. Young Ones, written by Virginia Radcliffe and directed by Warren Somerville. 
In the cast, Ralph Camargo, Peter Fernandez, William Redfield, Rosemary Rice, and Lawrence Robinson. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, M.C. Brock. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser.